Hi, my name is Danielle Fisher. I'm usually from Microsoft Research. I do research on uh, social computing, online social systems, how groups of people do stuff together online. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. I felt like talking instead about some things that came up with a friend when uh, she, after she had finished talking about uh, technology in a uh, lecture that she does at uh, University of Washington. She mentioned that a bunch of her students had developed strange ideas about technology, that technology is a wonderful thing, that everyone needs more technology. And so I thought that I'd spend a few moments diffusing things to people who already know this. So first, as Beth just pointed out, for example, technology does not ride on a rail. In America, we're accustomed to thinking about technology as sort of having come in this wonderful sequence, right? For example, we had phones, which led to cell phones. Also, we had phones, which led to, uh, well, cell phones led to eventually SMS after we had gotten enough of it. Uh, also, phones have led to the internet, which led to uh, network computer systems. Obviously, in other parts of the world, this is not developed the same way. This is China. That was China, for example, where SMS uh, far beat uh, landlines. This is uh, Peru, where you can find internet cafes in ancient buildings, in a place that never had a computing infrastructure, but now has an internet cafe infrastructure. And um, this is also from Africa. <laughs> where cell phones are being used for a wide variety of purposes. <laughs> I love Flickr. Um, also, we think of ourselves today as in an era of unprecedented technological change. I completely agree. However, every era in history has been an era of unprecedented technological change, and this is nothing new. This was uh, struck home to me recently when I was um, reading a book about history of technology and various changes. Um, this is an ancient Roman sewer system installed in Bath, England. Sewers were really, really cool. They changed the world in ways that the internet can't touch on and still are changing the world. This is the plow, a tremendously controversial technology in the mid uh, 17th, 18th, 19th centuries, depending on which variant of it was, of it was and where. And in fact, uh, different groups in early settling America began to do uh, different innovations on the plow and would get into fights about whose plow was best. This is a book called Diffusion of Innovations, which if you're interested in learning about how agriculture really was an interesting way of understanding how technology has diffused and changed, you should read. It's really hard to predict what your technology is going to do for you. So specifically, um, anyone can, for example, Really curious how the slide's going to work out next. Oh, cool. So when the horseless carriage came out, anyone could have predicted that you know, this would lead to, say, faster transportation, getting from place to place faster. It took slightly longer for people to predict, for example, that this might lead to things like traffic jams. But even that's fairly straightforward compared to predicting that this would lead to things like suburbs. But OK, we've got our hands on suburbs because suburbs are just old, like the old cities except spread out more. But how many people figure that that would lead in turn to the drive-in movie, which in turn leads to the birth control pill, <laughs> work on it, which in turn leads to the sexual revolution. There we go, sexual revolution. <laughs> so figuring out second, third, and fourth order effects of the small technologies that we create today is really difficult. Indeed, even very smart people who think very hard about these problems are often wrong. My favorite example of this is actually a very dead, very smart person uh, in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure that was Socrates, and in America we think of him as Socrates. He wrote, literacy is not a legitimate son of knowledge, but a bastard. When an attack is made upon this bastard, neither parent nor anyone else is there to, to defend it. Not only has he predicted postmodernism by 2,000 years, but he is also arguing <coughs> that literacy kills memorization, that our ability to see text on, on paper makes us forget our ability to tell stories. He was right. Fortunately, Plato wrote this stuff down in a book that we now call the Phaedrus. And because Plato wrote these complaints about literacy down, we now remember it. That said, technology is not necessarily progress. The fact that it's a newer technology, it's a better technology, does not necessarily mean that our world is a better place or our lives are better. I could mention things like the atom bomb or the cleaning machine, but instead I'm going to talk about this. <laughs> and I think on that note I will close and thank you all for your time.